Hi and welcome to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial what I'm going to be doing is uh, giving you an introduction into BNF. Uh, so what is BNF? Well BNF is an example of a meta language. And meta languages are used to define the syntax of uh, a computer programming language uh, like Python or Java. So we could try to uh, define the syntax of a language uh, using regular expressions and that would be one way uh, that you could do it. However, there are some programming language constructs that uh, can't be defined in this way and um, there, there may be some uh, exam paper questions that you get um, which ask you uh, about which uh, bits of programming languages can you define uh, using regular expressions and which bits you can't and I'll aim to cover that in a future video. So we can't uh, completely define a programming language uh, using regular expressions. What about using a language like uh, English which is a natural language? Well that's not going to work because uh, languages like English are too imprecise to define uh, computer programming languages with and they come with lots of ambiguity and humans can fill in that uh, ambiguity using common sense uh, whereas uh, computers uh, have no common sense so they can't uh, do that. So this is why uh, meta languages are needed because they allow us to define a computer programming language and all its contra and all its constructs in an unambiguous way. So let's take a look at the syntax then. What does BNF actually look like? Okay, so BNF is composed of a series of statements which are written in this format that I've got here. So we have some meta component on the right hand so uh, on the left hand side, uh, which could be something like uh, word if we were defining uh, what constitutes uh, a valid word in our particular language. Then we have uh, this symbol here and what this symbol here means is uh, it literally means is defined by. So um, this is an example of a meta symbol so um, it's a symbol that's used in BNF which means is defined by. So we have something on the left hand side here which is defined by the stuff on the right hand side. And that stuff on the right hand side is either some other meta components um, and as we'll see in a minute they can be the same meta component as on the, as it's on the left hand side if we if we're doing if we've got a recursive uh, definition going on here. Or they can be symbols like um, characters for example which are the most basic um, uh, fundamental things in our BNF uh, definitions. And each of these statements or definitions uh, is usually referred to as a production rule. So let's go on to looking at an example uh, of the of using this syntax then because I can appreciate that this is a bit abstract at the moment. Okay so in this example then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some uh, BNF uh, production rules uh, which uh, will help us to work out whether a uh, particular uh, string is a valid variable in a language where a variable must contain a letter followed by any number of letter letters or uh, digits. Okay, so here's my uh, BNF for defining a variable. And uh, you can see I've got uh, three produc production rules here and the bottom two um, what I've got is uh, on the left hand side I've got a meta component so the first one is digit and the second uh, uh, one in the second rule is letter and uh, they are defined by uh, in, in the case of the first one uh, digit digit is defined by uh, 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 so a digit, essentially what this is saying is a digit can be any one uh, of 0 to 9. So that's the first, uh, that's, that's the digit production rule. The letter production rule here is defined by any lowercase letter here, I've written them out here, uh, or any uppercase letter. So they're fairly straightforward. A letter can be any lowercase letter or any uppercase letter. A digit can be any uh, digit 0 to 9. 
So what about the variable production rule then? Well, a variable is defined by a letter. So a variable could be a single letter on its own in this language. So remember uh, when I uh, set the problem, it was to use BNF to define uh, a variable in a language where a variable can consist of a letter followed by any number of other letters or numbers. Uh, so a variable can could consist of a letter on its own or a variable uh, and a digit. So this is where the recursion comes in because the variable is defined uh, in terms of itself. Uh, so a variable could be a letter on its own, a variable and a digit, or a variable and a letter. So let's go through an example then of how uh, we might use this uh, to work out uh, if a particular variable is indeed valid. So we're going to see uh, whether hi1 is a valid variable. So let's use these rules then. So h uh, is a letter. We can see that h is here in the uh, definition of in the letter production rule. So h is a letter and is therefore a variable. So h is a letter and is therefore a variable. Because h is a letter, um, and a variable can be a letter on its own, h is also a variable. Let's bring in uh, the character i now. h i is a variable and a letter because we've got h which we've just uh, reasoned here is a variable and then we've got i which is a letter because it's defined uh, in the letter production rule. And because a variable can be a variable and a letter, uh, hi is therefore a variable. And then finally hi1 is a variable because we've just uh, reasoned here that hi is a variable and a digit because one can be found in the uh, digit production rule. So hi1 is a variable and a digit and is therefore a variable. Okay, so what we've done there is uh, something called parsing. And parsing uh, is the process of working out whether a statement is valid, in this case, whether hi1 is a valid variable name using the uh, BNF uh, definition uh, that we've got up here. So we've done some parsing there. And usually a computer would do that parsing to work out, uh, for example, if some code you've written in Python is valid Python code. Okay, let's go through one final example then. Let's work out using the BNF uh, definition. So let's pass uh, one, two, three, uh, use it and work out whether it is a valid variable. So let's take one first of all. So one, we can say uh, is a digit because it's in the definition uh, for a digit uh, but uh, is not a variable because we can see that a variable can't be a digit on its own and then if we were to look at one and two uh, well one is not a variable and uh, two is a digit uh, but we can't have two digits uh, um, uh, we can, two digits cannot be a variable, we have to have a variable and a digit uh, to include digits and variables. And if we were to look at 1, 2, 3, well 1 is a digit, 2 is a digit, 3 is a digit, uh, but none of them or no combination of them can be uh, used as a variable in according to our definition. Uh, so. So none, no, none of them or no combination of them is a variable according to our definition of a variable. So uh, we, one, two, three is not a uh, variable. Okay, so that brings us to the end of my uh, introduction to uh, BNF. Okay, so I hope you found this tutorial video useful and thanks for watching.